You're still watching Ways. Now, the theme for this year's World Health Day is Together for a Fairer, Healthier World. On this occasion, the World Health Organization calls for urgent action to eliminate health inequalities and mobilize actions to attain better health for all, um, for all and leave no one behind. Health is a fundamental human right, and every person deserves to live a healthy life regardless of their age, gender, ethnicity, disability, economic situation, or e employment. And WHO is calling on leaders to monitor health inequalities and address their root, cause, um, their root causes to um, ensure that everyone has access to the living and working conditions that are conducive to good health and to quality health services where and where where and when they need them and to invest in primary health care to achieve health for all by all i mean um health can never the, the role of you know your health can never be emphasized you know and um this just reminded me when i was reading this it reminded me of uh, when we had um, a doctor that was talking about how a lot of our health challenges can be solved from the primary health um, centers. And up till now, it seems like the government is not serious in putting the primary health care, you know, up to standard, like building them up to standard. But well, we'll keep on talking about it. It's an awareness day, so we hope that the government is listening and they put, they fix, you know, our primary health care centers. All right, so ladies, uh, let me start with Tammy. Do you want to add anything to your, your health or you just take your story? Yes, I do. Go I ahead. I want to add something. So um, health from the perspective of professional, I just want to put, um, put this in. So you know, there's usually this thing, thankfully, the conversation is changing now, especially among professionals, where people, you know, don't take their health seriously. They, don't, they didn't take their health seriously. They didn't take enough rest therapy and you hear people brag about the things like oh you know i can step for one hour i skip for one hour every day what needs to be done and it's just like oh you have to for 30 minutes every day what needs to be done and people go on on and on having such conversations but then there's now the new perspective that that's not healthy because we could end up you know making so much money for yourself and Eventually, using the money to treat yourself. So it's like you abandon your health, going after money, and eventually you have to treat yourself and then you have to go after health and spend your money on health. I just said this to understand the importance of taking care of our own health and having that balance. You know, as professionals, I find that there's a lot, and sometimes we tend to neglect our health, especially when we're doing well. But it's important to take good care of our body, it's important to take to care of our health. I just want to push that in before I take my story. Go so ahead. My story says that Wyatt may postpone the major examination in Nigeria. And now this is according to the head of the Nigerian National Office, Mr. Patrick Aregon. He said that the coronavirus, the COVID pandemic, is supported the academic calendar. So there's no guarantee that the annual terminal examination will take place you know, the usual major time. It may not hold during the schedule. However, the news says that in Nigeria, so I'm not clear about whether they're talking about a date for the examination in Nigeria or for the examination in the entire world. You know, it's a West African examination. And I think we do it at the same time. But the news says in Nigeria. But according to the news, it still says that we should keep our fingers crossed. We'll find out much more whether, or much later on, whether the examination is holding major or uh, otherwise. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I know that COVID affected a lot. Even if it's held in May June, I'm not sure the students will be prepared for the examination. So I'm waiting for the final um, decision whether or not the examination will be holding and whether I cost a cost in Nigeria or just um, whether I cost a cost in West other Africa, Africa yeah. Or Nigeria. So that's uh, my name. All right. All right, so Jennifer, what did you find for us in the news today? Okay, so um, in Vanguard, we said um, mixed reactions as federal government extends NIN SIM linkage. Um, so basically, they spoke to some Nigerians and they've expressed their views on the extension. 
for the NINSIM linkage. Um, they spoke to Ms., uh, Mr. Thomas Adegoke, who is self-employed, and he expressed excitement at the extension, saying that it had been difficult to get registered due to the crowds at the enrollment centers. Um, they spoke to a Mrs. Vivian Ilechuku, who said that the extension was appreciated because it would enable her to register her child for NIM to be eligible for, for JAM. And they also spoke to a SIM vendor, Ms. Blessing Okon, who expressed disappointment that the extension was putting a hold on the source of her livelihood because nothing would be done except the registration was done. Hmm. So that's what is in the news today. Okay, well, it's Nigeria. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. <laughs> I'll just go. I have, I, because you know what? You know, we were talking today in the group, and I said, you know, at, at this point, I think I want to start taking soft topics because Nigeria is actually getting me to that point of depression, and I do not want to get to that point of depression where, because it seems like all the time there's just too many stories, you know, in, 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 the, in the news. All right, so, but my story is actually quite a fun one, and I thought to share. So I'm tired of talking old doom and gloom, gloom stories. Um, so uh, an eight-month-old, um, an eight-month pregnant woman, rather, defied all odds to win a gold medal, right, at the uh, ongoing sports festival happening in Benin, you know. And guess what? Taekwondo. <laughs> so Aminat Idris, who fought in the mixed um, category, uh, together with her male counterpart, she has uh, uh, surprised fans and she came out, came out what's it called, um, with the gold medal. I mean, with eight-month-old pregnancy. I said, okay, this kind of woman, if <laughs> you cannot try her. You know, she just reminded me of the kinds of stories we heard our mothers tell us about, you know, how they would go to the farm you know, they are pregnant, they go to the farm, and they will deliver their baby, remove the placenta, clean the baby, back the baby, or breastfeed the baby, and start heading back with no aid, no nothing. So when I saw this, I said, wow. I mean, this is worth celebrating. So congratulations to Amina. She's um, from um, Team Lagos, right? Uh, so she's from Team Lagos, and she won the, the, the gold medal in the female category. Wow, yes, I'm super, I'm super excited for her. I'm super excited for her. I didn't even know that um, a sports festival was going on in Edo State. And yesterday, we talked about, uh, what's it called? Um, sports, uh, we talked about sports yesterday, the national, international holiday that, you know, getting people, using sports as a form of getting uh, people, you know, engaged and all of that. So I'm happy that this young lady has won this um, gold medal and congratulations again to her. She's a strong woman. <laughs> I wish I can be like that. Jennifer. Yeah, this, is, this is such a big deal. Yeah. So Jennifer and Tammy, you people, are, you people have, what's it called? There's, there's something that we're going to be watching now you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to her. I know. Is it and it, is you it know safe? what I'm thinking? Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead, Jennifer. Yeah, I said I'm, I'm happy for her and congrats to her. But I'm wondering if it is safe. I mean, she's eight months pregnant. Is it safe to be engaging in a of course. sport like that? Of course, see, if you are if you are sporty, right? If you're sporty, for instance, maybe you used to do uh what's it called? Whatever it is, sports that you were doing before, as long as you you I mean, I mean pregnancy cannot stop you from being doing that kind of sports. You know, especially if you're not at risk, if you're not those kind of people that have, you know, difficult pregnancy like me, I mean from month one to month nine. You, I mean, I'm jumping all over the place. So if you're actually a very, very um, agile person, you won't have any challenge, except if maybe there's a medical condition that you need to now probably take a rest and all of that. So there's a standard that she has set for two of you. <laughs> I'm going to be watching out <laughs> when that time comes. <laughs> I, mean, I, feel like, I feel like this is a big, um, what's the word now? I think it's a big challenge. Because I'm not even pregnant. That's what I said. I said... You know, when? Slim, and people just expect that because you're slim, you're fit. And sometimes I'm trying to do, you know, climb up some staircase and I'm breathing like, ha ha. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be so fit. I see people going to the gym and doing so many things and I'm like, can I but, do but, this? So this is like such a big challenge. Well, Tammy, thank you for taking us there because people always assume that skinny people are fit. They are not fit, oh. 
You have to be sure that you are fit. <laughs> but no, that's... it's not true. It's not true. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll take a break. Oh, let's just talk Nigerian matters. <laughs> See you. We'll be right back.